this is actually quite a big deal. I'm actually pretty hype about this. We've got a bunch of letters from people in various uh, scientific professions. Um, so here we have a letter from high-profile high biologists. An open letter written to the Minister for Women's Inequalities. And their letter is titled, Biology is Not Binary, a letter from biologists, doctors and other experts to Bridget Phillipson, the Minister for Women and Equalities. Um, it's actually a pretty good letter. It's not that long, so I think we'll just go through it. Um, they're saying, we're writing to you in, our in your capacity as Minister for Women and Equalities with respect to the recent EHRC interim update. So this is, the EHRC is a group that I've ranted about quite a lot. Um, it's the government's like human rights organisation and it's led by Baroness Falconer, who hates trans people. And they basically try to ban all trans women and all trans men and all non-binary people, basically, from all men's and women's spaces. Um, but also, it's all full of this, like, biological sex, gender-critical speak, um, biological man who identifies as a woman or whatever. Um, anyway, they say, in light of of the recent Supreme Court ruling, we are writing to you to express deep concern with these developments and request that the government take action to restore the rights of trans and non-binary individuals to public spaces. The Supreme Court determined that Equality Act provisions with respect to single-sex spaces should be made on biological sex. Like biological sex, the term biological woman and biological man used by the EHC, EHRC and others are often not used as scientific terms, but political ones. To our knowledge, neither the court nor the EHRC has attempted to define biological sex. This is, again, this has been signed by a whole bunch of uh, high-profile like professors and um, lecturers and biologists at major universities and stuff. Th this is what I, I personally have wanted for so long. I'm super hype about this one, guys. <laughs> um... The scientists have shown up in the UK. We, we've seen letters like this from the USA. It's just good to have some British ones too. Um, anyway, they say... Uh, where did we get to? <clears throat> the term biological sex has been used to sort all people into one of two groups. However, a strict binary categorization is an oversimplification. An individual's sex is in fact made up of a collection of characteristics. Oh, I've been seeing this for so long. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Including, what's the list? External genitalia, secondary sex characteristics, gonads, chromosomes, and hormones, and may be better described as bimodal. Each of these traits can vary beyond two categories and may or may not coincide with other measures of sex within the same individual. Thus, a binary immutable model of sex is not capable of capturing biological diversity present in human populations, and as a result, it is unsafe basis for policy. Mate. Oh, it's so good. I, I almost just feel like I'm reading what I've been saying. <laughs> and it's kind of reassuring when I'm like doing all this. I'm a skeptic and I just believe in the science and I actually think sex is a um, mutable bimodal distribution made up of multiple characteristics including the following and then finally the scientists get in gear and they just say the same fucking thing and it's like <laughs> so good um, the medical and scientific community has accepted for some time there is significant complexity in this area recently both doctors and scientists including Nobel laureates have raised concerns about the impact of this oversimplification on human rights. We present a brief summary to explain this below. Mate, it's just so good. I, I am going to read all this because I'm, I'm enjoying it. So even if you're all like, God, what is this science bullshit? It's good science bullshit. <laughs> Sex characteristics observed at birth, for example, external genitalia, are determined by a range of factors. The presence of the SRY gene on the Y chromosome usually leads to the development of male characteristics during development, though this is not always the case, such as for some individuals with androgen insensitivity syndrome born with XY chromosomes. Binary categorizations at birth are simplified rules and do not precisely capture biological variation, such as in differences of sexual development. This is sourced throughout, by the way. They've got a whole bunch of references at the bottom. Um... 
like a load of papers backing up all of the claims they're making. Oh, it's so good. Um, sorry, I'm having a good time. <laughs> um, beyond this, sex is not an immutable characteristic. Primary and secondary sex characteristics change during life and through medical interventions. As part of medical transition, many trans people undergo surgery which alters external genitalia and other bodily features. And as such, anatomy is neither binary nor fixed. Although some may argue that these are just rare exceptions, these populations together are those most affected by recent developments and therefore should not be ignored when developing policy and law. Many cis individuals also undergo procedures that change sex characteristics. Yes, they do. <laughs> Hormones, gene expression, and physiology are not binary. Gonadal steroids, such as estrogen, affect characteristics such as muscle and connective tissue, fat distribution, breast and hair growth, bone density, immunity, lung physiology, and more. It's the full list of flipping dunks on gender criticals when they say something's binary. You're like, oh yeah? <laughs> what about this, mate? <clears throat> Many trans people take hormones during medical transition, and this process is generally responsible for extensive biological changes. Cells responsive to hormones, such as estrogen, will undergo changes on exposure, mediated by regulation of transcription. This means that hormones act like messages to the cells, causing them to undergo changes to function, changes to functionality. <clears throat> hormones also induce epigenetic modification. This is a normal biological process, which causes DNA to chemically and structurally be modified, changing the behavior of cells and the way in which they work to coordinate bodily functions. I'm so hype about this. This is like, I mean, it's better than I could have ever said it. <laughs> this is what happens when experts get involved rather than just some knobhead like me who just happens to have read all of the Wikipedia pages. Um, I like the classic transphobe thing to say is sex is in every cell of your body. And that is that little sentence is just wrong on so many like so many levels. Like the first most obvious level to me as someone who is an, an expert in epigenetics, is that your sex chromosomes aren't in every cell of your body. In fact, most of the cells in your body, fun fact, most of the cells in your body aren't human cells. They're actually bacteria cells. But of the human cells in your body, most of them, by number and volume, I think, are red blood cells, which don't have a nucleus. So they don't have a chromosomes in at all. So of your remaining cells, which is like 10% or something of the cells in your body, they have sex chromosomes. And so the person's like, hey, it's in every cell of your body. You mean it's in 10% of the cells of your body at most. But also, chromosomes aren't the only thing in your DNA. Like your DNA has a, a crazy amount of stuff in it. And <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of it, which is sexually dimorphic, which means take like there's some difference between the typical man and the typical woman on average and so much of that stuff changes extensive biological changes because of hormones hormones are like one of the most important things in sexual development and in how your body functions and like every single person has the full pardon me the full dna information to create a human of either sex or any combination of sex characteristics and your um, a combination of which genes turn other genes on and also how hormones influence how genes turn on decides in which way you'll develop. I mean, that's the only reason the transition works in the first place because, like, when trans people take hormones and it changes their actual features, like, you basically go for a second puberty. For example, for trans women, they grow breasts and they get softer skin and they're bone density changes and all, all kinds of things that wouldn't happen if humans were like totally separate species basically where you had like male dna and female dna and they were just totally different and unrelated to each other and you can't change them and it's mutable hormones wouldn't do anything because you wouldn't have the information for your body to become a male body or a female body or somewhere in between a combination of um that just wouldn't be in that DNA, but actually it is there. And it's it's more like you've got all the instructions to make basically any type of human, and then 
somewhat something comes along and reads all the instructions and tells your body what to do and then if at some point it changes how it reads the instructions then it just does something else um anyway as a result trans people who choose to medically transition undergo significant medically important changes that if not acknowledged can lead to clinical harm for example a trans woman taking estrogen for you know it's you know when the experts have come out with them spelling estrogen with an o rather than an e get wrecked americans <laughs> This is how you're meant to spell it. Um, trans women taking estrogen for a short period of time would experience a reduction in a hemoglobin level. To use birth sex references range, reference ranges for blood tests, in this case, would be inappropriate. Uh, interpretation of results with a potential for misdiagnosis, over-investigation, and harm. This is just what I was talking about in that letter that I wrote to the LMC. Such medical subtleties demonstrate that individualized approaches are required rather than arbitrary imposed binaries. Similar complexities are also reflected in cis populations. For example, there can be significant hormonally mediated differences in medication metabolism and pr response pre and post menopause. <laughs> Mate, this is just so good. This is, It's like a, a better written summary of everything I've argued in the last 10 years. <laughs> Yes. Statements that biological sex is binary are only approximately accurate in the context of reproduction or fertility, which are largely irrelevant to daily life and not a good basis for determining access to toilets or other spaces. Trans and non-binary and gender non-conforming cis people, or those who may be cis but perceived to fall into these two groups, may be at risk of exclusion. Health inequality, harassment and violence in society due to employment of simplistic models and biological essentialism. We concern the recent ruling and the government's adoption of the EHSC interim update does not advance women's rights, but introduces new risks for many members of, of our society, including cis women. We call upon the government, EHRC media and other relevant organisations to stop the misuse of overly simplistic binary models to further political causes that may target vulnerable people. Policy and legislation in general should be informed by accurate, complete evidence and stakeholder engagement. We caution that policy based on scientific misconceptions or oversimplifications, such as the EHRC interim update, could lead to serious harm to real individuals in public spaces, medical contexts, and many, many other areas of life. Although the government is not directly responsible for the EHRC guidance or the recent Supreme Court ruling, we request that you take urgent, access, uh, urgent action to restore the rights of trans people and non-binary people to access to toilets and other spaces central to daily life. Signed, a whole fucking bunch of experts in biology. <laughs> there are loads of them. That's not all, though. They are presumably the ones who are in the biology field, maybe a bit more notable. No offence to the ones low down. Then we get the references. A whole bunch of references. Then we get a whole load of other signatures, like loads of other doctors and experts and PhDs and... There are a lot of... It's just so good to see. And, like, one of the... Wait, they're still going. Look at this. Look at it. Look at how many people have come out. Not just... I was going to say not people, biologists. Not real people. Just biologist-identified females. No. There's... A, man. Look, just, there are so many people. These are, these are experts in this field who are knowledgeable, who... We're happy to put their name to this letter, which isn't just... I mean, this is politically pro-trans. Uh, they have this whole section at the end about making sure trans and non-binary people have access to spaces. That's obviously a pro-trans message, and it's good to see people putting their name to that. I, maybe that's the bigger story, but personally, as a flipping nerd who spends all their time arguing about biology and science and stuff... And pointing out that the gender critical position isn't just horrible. Like so many people are like, oh, you need to be kinder to trans people. No yes, please. But also it is wrong. What they're saying is factually wrong. And it's just so good to see loads of experts saying it. And when you like sometimes you get letters from gender criticals. I remember there was this time when they were going through their little letters to the MP phase and it there'll be a new article in the times every single week and it'd be like lesbians write a letter 
condemning trans people and the next week it'd be like biologists write a letter condemning trans people and there's they would have like 11 signatures and it would be the same 11 people every week when i scroll down this list of people some of them i recognize the names most of them i'm like oh it's a new person oh it's a new person because i think the <laughs> supreme court ruling woke up a lot of people and they're like wow okay trans rights are maybe worse than we thought in this country, or they are now. We should do something about it. And sure, we can all be annoyed that people didn't notice sooner and we've been talking about it for 10 years or whatever. But doesn't matter. All that matters is people are on the right page now and all these amazing people were prepared to speak up for us in a scientific way. Amazing. Thank you to the biologist community. Yes.